lots of things to say. <laughs> the Lord be with you! Sorry to be so loud, but imagine the daunting task of getting the attention of over 60 middle schoolers, and I would say welcome to Wright 13, 2008. We set out to tackle this task a bunch of newbie leaders, Mike Foz, Chris, Sheila, Norma, Chris, myself, and later Dan. Some of us had taught Sunday school before, but never a youth group. We were handed a huge binder called Journey to Adulthood, and our Wright 13 journey began. Our first task was the Summit Lake Retreat with 45 kids that we didn't even know by name. We gave them each a name tag that was color-coded in the corner for car group, prayer group, obstacle course group, and room assignment. <laughs> Ten kids lost their name tags before we even left the church party. <laughs> all in all, it turned out to be an amazing retreat. Who can forget the kids accidentally falling into the path all of their paddles into the forbidden summit summit lake, chase his bloody nose during paddle play, pulling Mark up the obstacle course high wall by his underwear, the raw a pillow fight, and yes, dodgeball. Outlawed in public schools, but not on church retreats. <laughs> At times during the weekend, I swore to myself I would embed GPS tracking devices into several kids before the next retreat, and you know who you are. There was definitely some girl drama in sleeping quarters, lack of leader sleep due to snoring chaperones, and even some boy drama involving grounded Oreo cookies and a game of sardines. But overall, it was a great time. And then, right 13 classes began. We painstakingly divided the large group into two classes, but the kids kept coming and coming. It seemed like there were hundreds of them. So small and cute. Most of them were even shorter than me, if that's even possible. Uh, we ended up needing a third class, largely in part of all those copper boys, and sometimes <laughs> even a fourth class in the hallway for, to a uh, point of phrase from the Richardsons, the Crackalax, that sent out into the hallway for disrupting class, and you know who you are. <laughs> At one point, we had 65 kids on the roster, not counting Chris Richardson, of course, and we were constantly confusing Megan with Kimmy and Kimmy with Emily. Because Wright 13 is comprised of two grades, the Wright 13ers were anywhere from 11 to 14 years old, depending on their birthdays. Trust me when I say that the difference between an 11-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl is developmentally about 10 years. <laughs> a constant challenge during class time. And the kids kept coming every week. We thought attendance might drop off at some point, but no, they kept coming. It was truly amazing to watch them grow as a Christian community. I'd like to recap some of the great Right 13 highlights that stand out for us, and I hope for you all as well. Remember blessing of the animals the haunted hayrides, the Christmas parties with leader decorating and the longest white elephant gift exchange ever, <laughs> working at the spaghetti and suppers and pancake dinners, delivering mugs of love, the fast food progressive lunch, the hunger simulation, snow tubing at Round Top, Cascade Lake with the floating dock and lots of sunburn, and many others. And then there were the Right 13 liturgies, so special, marking each right turner Right 13ers transformation from manhood to womanhood. Remember the pizza and the poster making? The lasagna rehearsal dinners? Miss Sheila crying during every parent presentation? <laughs> Reverend Jimmy's special blessing during the service? <laughs> Nothing's changed. We had a total of six liturgies throughout the two years, all a special reminder of how God marvelously made each and every one of the Right 13ers, as we were reminded in Psalm 139. The Wright 13ers really bonded, the leaders really bonded, and we somehow survived those first two years of Wright 13 unscathed. Well, except for Mike Brunch, who needed a sabbatical and ran off to Australia. <laughs> we hope you have fond memories of Wright 13 and learned at least a little something along the way. I have recently received requests from several seniors, such as, Miss Amy, can you sign my NHS application? Miss Amy, can you write me a recommendation for Eagle Scout, a job, a college scholarship? Where did those six years go? I am utterly amazed at the growth and maturity of all of these seniors and their many accomplishments. It has been my extreme privilege to be a part of their lives of all these wonderful adult, young adults. And for most of them, they started out six years ago in my little grade 13 class. And 
went on to embark on a spiritual journey that I hope has touched their lives as much as it has touched ours, meaning us and all the leaders. I will close with a funny story on a lighter note um, about a day in the life of a Ray 13 leader. We tried very hard to incorporate the J2 curriculum into fun activities. On one such occasion, we decided to have the kids divide into groups and use brown bag skits to illustrate the lesson. Used to lot Discovery Weekend, a brown bag skit consists of literally a brown bag filled with very random props, usually from the Johnson's basement. And the purpose is to come up with a skit using every single prop in the bag, having everyone in the group participate. This particular day, with the lesson being about famous women in the Bible, one group needed to do a skit portraying Mary, the mother of Jesus. Enter Eli, representing Mary, dressed in an apron and holding a baseball home plate. Enter Mark, representing the angel Gabriel, dressed in a funny hat, waving a spatula. Gabriel, Mary, you are going to have a baby! Mary, holding up home plate. But Gabriel, that's impossible! Joseph and I haven't even made it to first base yet! <laughs> Being a right 13 meter is all. <laughs>